was, but Auburn again down to just a couple of seconds on the shot clock. Well, that was great help by Ramirez on the rotation. And go for it with another block. But I think they called her with the foul. It's on Langerman. But that was a heave with one second on the shot clock, but Arkansas didn't have rebounders in the area. And Neighbors just got a technical foul. Yeah, this is where Arkansas, we've mentioned it in the first quarter, they have to rebound. When you're missing part of your offensive players, missing your leader, you have to do the little things, and rebound is one of them. And Blair, I'll put another layer on that conversation as we go back and look at this foul. It's called on Langerman. That's not a foul, unless it was that arm that came behind on the swing. Sasha thought the whistle was on her. I think there might have been a little bit of anticipation and maybe the referee's at a bad angle because it looks like Riley's right arm might have been in there if you're at a bad angle, but I don't necessarily think it was. To add on to your rebounding conversation, if Auburn's going to take it down to two seconds on the shot clock yep. and they get the rebound, they're going to really start to limit Arkansas's potential possessions. They really are. I mean, they're out rebounding Arkansas 23 to 15, and those are when they miss those shots with one second on the clock and they get the rebound. It's almost like a, a it just breaks your spirit almost. You're like, oh, there's just a sigh of frustration. They've got to rebound on the weak side. They came into this game knowing their shooting percentage. They can't overlook the fact they can still score. They're Division I athletes. They're Division I basketball players. They still have the capability to score. Don't overlook it and take it for granted. Make every shot contested. So Grayson shot the two free throws, and now Amora Graves will shoot. So obviously that whistle was on the shot, and then the technical free throws as well will be shot here from Graves and the possession for the Tigers. I think the frustration for the Hawks is they have been trying to get a little bit closer than four or five points. And yet it's right back up to six. Sure, but four or five points missing two key players, three key players really. I mean, they're where they need to be. They can't let the frustration overcome. Or honesty, either one of them wants to shoot it. Precious Johnson had that hang on the iron. It's out of bounds. It'll stay Tiger ball. Cuba ball is wide open for a three. They just didn't see it. Coach Harris was making eye contact during that position with Koulibaly, almost communicating with her yeah. across the court. She was wide open. Now she's communicating with the, <laughs> the <officials>. referees. <laughs> <laughs> Ever so politely. <laughs> to block. Koulibaly backing away from Barnum. The ball's oh, out of bounds again. It'll stay Auburn basketball. And this is where their physicality yeah. has really helped them maintain the possession. And the thing for Arkansas is they saw that in Texas a &M. They saw it in Tennessee. So the carryover from those two games works to their advantage right here against Auburn. Some confusion whose basketball it is. One of our officials over at the scorer's table. Johnny Harris just got a technical foul. Now both coaches have been teed up. And what a time for a technical with 5.14 to play in a one-point game. Uh, it's interesting. Maybe she'll send a message to her team. Hey, we're still in this game. Don't give up. Don't quit. I've got your back. I'm working every angle. So it's a good message to her team. Problem is it's two free throws, for Ramirez. which could be two <laughs> free points for Amber Ramirez. And the 87% free throw shooter makes them both, and she's pumped in 24 points tonight. And the Razorbacks enjoying again. It'll be interesting second to, lead of the game. Yeah, to see how Auburn responds to Coach Harris' technical and to see how Arkansas responds. 